Phase one of the city's ban on single-use plastics gets underway. Peak tram services remain suspended because of fallen trees on the tracks. Hello and welcome to TVB News. The city's ban on single-use plastics started today. Multiple kinds of disposable plastic tableware and products can no longer be provided for free under the first phase of the ban, but there is a six-month grace period for the use of plastic cutlery at eateries. Mimo Singai reports. Starting today, the public will have to adapt using non-plastic cutlery. This is the sample gone branch of a chain restaurant. A poster has been put up to inform customers about the change. No more free plastic cutlery. Under the first phase of the plastic-free measure, restaurants are not allowed to offer polystyrene tableware, as well as plastic forks, knives, spoons, stirrers and plates. Plastic cups, cup lids and bowls, however, are exempted from the first phase ban. While the official ban began today, the chain restaurant said they have adapted to the change for a week. Corporate director George Chiu mentioned the preparations they did to get ready for the change, trials to test different types of environmentally friendly cutlery to find the most ideal ones. When asked about the diner's reaction, Chiu said most supported the change. These are the plastic-free cutlery that the chain restaurant uses, including a wooden knife, a wooden fork and a plant fiber spoon. Customers must now pay an extra dollar if they want to take the cutlery with them. This is an area in Mong Kok where residents and tourists like to visit for snacks and specialty drinks, such as bubble tea. The government said a six-month adaptation period will be given to the public, allowing restaurants to use up their remaining stock of plastics. This shop offers paper straws to customers. A tourist from the Philippines preferred paper straws over plastic ones. It's better to use the, uh, the paper because it's easy to soft to save the environment. You get paper straws, and obviously if you don't drink it, you drink straight away straw at the bottom goes all soggy and you're unable to take a drink but it's all to do with the, the environment or you can buy metal straws yourself carry it with you. you the rain was heavy in the afternoon yet residents can no longer get a plastic bag to put their wet umbrellas because the bag is also a banned item starting from today the new measure also applies to hotels and guest houses this hotel in one joke hand adapted to the change by providing non-plastic items for instance bamboo made toothbrushes and toothpaste in aluminium packaging the hotel said they struggled to find substitutes to replace some products, including shower caps and shavers. Guests who need the products will have to contact the hotel staff or buy them from vending machines at a cost of $10 per item. Mims Nye, TVB News. Peak tram services remain suspended throughout the day as workmen continue to remove trees that fell onto the tracks after yesterday's amber rainstorm warning signal. It has yet to be confirmed whether services will resume tomorrow. Many tourists who went to the peak tram terminus in Central today voiced their disappointment. Timothy Lee tells us more. Workmen toiled away for the second day, removing tumbled trees near the peak tram's Barker Road station. They used chainsaws to cut up the trees after some of them fell on top of the cable car tracks. Signs reminding visitors of the suspension of services can be seen outside the peak tram terminus in Central. In a bid to facilitate those who wish to visit the peak, City Bus diverted its Route 15 buses traveling between Central and the peak to pick up passengers at the peak tram terminus. At times, there were up to 100 people queuing for the bus. <laughs> This visitor from Fuzhou said she was disappointed and that she had walked a long way just for the opportunity to take the tram. We are not happy, really not happy. We are coming six people, six people from India just to go through tram, but today no tram. So disappointed. Because of the suspension of peak tram services, City Bus also suspended its Route 15 C services traveling between the Star Ferry Pier in Central and the peak tram terminus. Timothy Lee, TVB News. The mainland's Ministry of Water Resources has warned that heavy rain across parts of southern China is set to continue. This has reports say at least four people died and 10 are missing in floods and rain-related incidents in the province. 
Floodwaters have yet to recede in parts of heavily hit Xiaoguan City. Rescue workers used excavators to clear the debris after a landslide. Meanwhile, a commercial area in Yingde City, located in northern Guangdong, was half submerged because of the deluge. Rainfall in the city reached above 580 millimeters as of Sunday, breaking all previous records for the month of April. More than 30,000 local residents have been evacuated from the city, while some 110,000 people were forced to move across the province. Weather, weather authorities forecast heavy rainfall in central and southern Guangdong, as well as eastern Fujian province. Foreign Minister Wang Yi met Cambodia's King Norodom Sihamouni in the capital Phnom Penh during the third stop of his three-nation trip. Wang told the king that China will always be Cambodia's most trustworthy partner and strongest supporter. The foreign minister, who earlier visited Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, also met his Cambodian counterpart and Deputy Prime Minister Sok Chanda Sophia. Sophia. Wang is co-chair of the seventh meeting of the China-Cambodia Intergovernmental Coordination Committee. He is scheduled to meet Prime Minister Hun Mane and his father and former leader, Hun Sen, now president of the Senate. China is helping Cambodia to establish an industrial development corridor and a fish and rice corridor aimed at boosting the country's economic growth. The International Monetary Fund has forecast that India's economy is likely to surpass Japan's in 2025 to become the fourth largest globally. In its latest estimate, the body predicted India's GDP to hit 4.3398 trillion US dollars in 2025, with Japan's GDP reaching 4.3103 trillion US dollars in the same year. Last October, the IMF stated it would likely take until 2026 for India's GDP to overtake Japan's. However, the continued depreciation of the yen has contributed to the latest prediction revision. In recent years, India has overtaken Japan in domestic automobile sales. It is now the third largest domestic automobile market after China and the U.S. Still, India's nominal GDP per capita remains a fifth of the level of China. The IMF has also forecast India's GDP to overtake Germany's by 2027. However, it warned the Indian Central Bank against interfering too much in the currency market. Still ahead, parliamentary election victory for the Maldives President's Party. The opening statements in Donald Trump's first criminal trial later tonight. And Hong Kong's youngsters average height two centimeters taller than in the early 1990s. Welcome back. Voters in the Maldives have handed President Mohamed Muizu's party a landslide win at parliamentary elections. The result is set to shift the Indian Ocean archipelago closer to China and away from traditional partner India. Tracy Furness has more. Voters were out Sunday as the Maldives went to the polls. Six political parties and independent groups were fielding 368 candidates for 93 seats in parliament. But it was President Mohamed Mouizou's People's National Congress that won 70 of the 93 seats. The main opposition Maldives Democratic Party, led by former President Ibrahim Mohamed Saleh, dwindled to just 15 seats. The country had 602 polling stations across its constituencies, with three stationed overseas in Colombo, Sri Lanka, Travandrum in India and Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. The election was closely watched by both Beijing and New Delhi as the two countries compete for influence in the Indo-Pacific region. 
Moisu's presidential campaign theme was India out, accusing his predecessor of compromising national sovereignty by giving India too much influence. His government asked dozens of Indian military personnel to leave the Maldives. Relations were further strained when Indian social media activists started a boycott of tourism to the Maldives. The number of tourists from India visiting the country dropped from first place to sixth. Since last year, Moizu has taken a pro-China stand. Moizu visited China earlier this year and negotiated an increase in the number of tourists and inbound flights from China. The Maldives has had close ties with China since joining China's Belt and Road Initiative in 2013. Tracy Furness, TVB News. In New York, the opening statements in the trial of former President Donald Trump will take place later today. NBC looks at the prosecution's roadmap to the case and how they plan to present their case against Trump and who they intend to call to the stand. Just hours from now, a historic moment for American politics and the country's legal system. Opening statements in the criminal trial against Donald Trump in New York. Opening statements really just offer a preview of the facts to come. David Pecker, former publisher of the National Enquirer and a Trump ally, could be among the first witnesses called. Other key witnesses could include adult film star Stormy Daniels, Michael Cohen, Trump's former fixer, Karen McDougal, an ex-Playboy model, Hope Hicks, Trump's former White House communications director and possibly Mr. Trump himself. Yes. The prosecution will make its case to a jury of seven men and five women, along with six alternates, alleging that this is a matter of election interference. Mr. Trump has pled not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records related to a $130,000 payment made to Stormy Daniels. Prosecutors say it was made to keep her quiet about an alleged sexual encounter. The payment allegedly happened after his Access Hollywood tape leaked during the 2016 campaign. How are you? you? Terrific. The former president has denied allegations of the encounter with Daniels and the payment. This is a giant witch hunt. Mr. Trump is required to be in court every weekday except Wednesdays when court is not in session, limiting his ability to campaign. I'm supposed to be in a lot of different places campaigning, but I've been here all day. His North Carolina rally canceled on Saturday due to weather. I'm, more, I'm devastated that this could happen. Meanwhile, President Biden trimmed Mr. Trump's lead in our new NBC News poll. Trump leading Biden by just two points in a head-to-head -head matchup, down from five points. But with third-party candidates in the mix, Biden leads Trump by two points. Ecuador's President Daniel Noboa has won significant voter support for a raft of security measures which he says will help fight increased crime in the country. Eleven questions were posed to voters and most were focused on security. Proposals to combat the spiraling crime rate included deploying the army in the fight against gangs and lengthening prison sentences for convicted drug traffickers. Ecuador is traditionally one of South America's most peaceful countries, but it has been rocked in recent years by a wave of violence, which has been spilling over from neighboring Colombia, the world's largest producer of cocaine. Last year, the homicide rate shot up to 40 deaths per 100,000 people, one of the highest in the region. A man appeared at Fanling Magistrate's courts today after being accused of multiple sexual offenses. The 29-year-old defendant, surnamed Se, arrived at the court in a police van. He claimed to be a construction worker. The man was arrested by the police at Lok Ma Chao Control Point last Thursday. It is believed that he tried to flee the city. The police earlier received reports from different women claiming the man had forced them to conduct sexual activities in apartments he owned or rented between 2017 and February last year. The man is currently being charged with one count of indecent assault, two counts of rape, and a count of procuring an unlawful sexual act by threats. The case has been adjourned until Friday. 
Studies by the Department of Health found the average height of Hong Kong youngsters is two centimeters taller than in the 1990s. The department's maternal and child health centers will update their charts, measuring children's growth starting in July in an effort to reflect this upward trend in height and weight. Timothy Lee reports. There has been a noticeable growth in height among the city's youth in recent years. In a study conducted by the Department of Health between 2019 and 2022, which collected growth data from 20,000 children, results indicated the height of the average teenager has increased by two centimeters. The average height for 18-year-old males and females is now 172.5 centimeters and 160.2 centimeters, respectively. Some residents shared their thoughts on the results of the study. This student said he would like to grow taller to get on more amusement rides, adding that his mother always urged him to eat more. While this mother said she would prefer children to grow tall naturally. But the growth is not only vertical. The Department of Health stressed the average weight of children has also increased, but noted that the specific figure is hard to determine. Authorities said the charts for measuring the height and weight of children have been in use for three decades and is in need of an update. The latest chart will display nine percentage lines, which is two more than its predecessor. They will also use the Body Mass Index, or BMI, to calculate children's height and weight proportions in accordance with methods used by the World Health Organization. The new chart will be used at the DHS Maternal and Child Health Centers starting in July. Timothy Lee, TVB News. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Have a happy Monday and stay tuned for Pearl Magazine up shortly. Bye for now.